I think one of the best things about yesterday it is one of the, one of the tougher tests that we'll have away from home this season. In a minute, I'm going to let you listen to what Chris Boyd thought about it before the game. But with the Celtic transfer business um, ready to get underway again this week, there has been speculation that Celtic are about to make an, a move for a Newcastle United player. And it has to be said, it is one of the most uninspiring moves. And I think a lot of fans... Uh, I've been pretty much against it from what I've seen so far in the comment section of this channel. But first of all, before we talk about the Newcastle United player, let's talk about Chris Sutton and see what he had to say about the game yesterday. I didn't think Celtic were anywhere near their best uh, last week. The first 15 minutes, I thought they were you yeah, know, that's true. bang average. Uh, yeah. You know, they really were. Um, but, you know, they won comfortably in the end. They don't have the burden of, uh, of, of the Champions League qualifiers. I... Is that one of the most important things this season? The fact that we don't have the Champions League qualifiers to attend with, has that allowed Brendan Rodgers to maybe have more time to assess the squad rather than come in and make impact signings? We're going to be talking about the signings in just a minute. I think that's a, that's a really big deal. And in many respects, Brendan Rodgers is easing yep. his Celtic team into the season. But you can't ease yourself into a game against Aberdeen. Their form under Barry Robson last season when he took over was phenomenal. Their home record... Um, was excellent. We yeah. know that uh, they can this cause Celtic true. problems with that front duo who were both prolific last season and, and Celtic will have to hit the straps if they want to win today. It's a, it's well, the good thing is that Celtic actually won the game yesterday and I think we have to say that it was a tough game. It was a tough game and when we look at the back to the transfer market, people are all saying yesterday, it's like, where are we going to improve? I mean, Stephen Welsh had a fantastic half. Um, we still haven't replaced Jota and the news coming out of Newcastle this afternoon is it is something that we covered in this morning's video and we will talk about on the live later this evening. Uh, Celtic are interested in signing Newcastle United winger Ryan Fraser. It has been suggested by the Northern Echo that Celtic are lining up for a move for the out-of-favour Newcastle United player. He's now training with the development squad since fallen out in favour with uh, Eddie Howe. He hasn't been given a squad number for this season. Um, his squad number has been taken over by another player. His squad number was 21. It's been taken over from another player. Fraser's time on Timecastle was clearly coming to an end, uh, despite him still having two years left in his contract. It has been set. Now, I'm going to pause this for a second and stop talking about Ryan Fraser. I'm going to talk about Celtic players that have came in that are, weren't doing so well at their clubs before that were of a similar age group in the past. Now, one player is, is the player that we've just been talking about, Chris Sutton. Chris Sutton, if you remember his time at Chelsea, um, he wasn't doing too well at Chelsea at the time. He'd kind of fallen out of favour. He's, um, He wasn't the prolific striker that he once was and he wasn't in the first team. He came to Celtic and we all know the story about Chris Sutton when he came to Celtic. You then look at John Hartson. John Hartson's another player who failed a medical for another team, thankfully. Um, and that other team was this team across the road from us. And uh, he failed a medical and then he actually passed a medical for Celtic and came to Celtic. And he, John Hartson, well, you all know about John Hartson and how good he was for Celtic. Is Ryan Fraser going to be that similar type of player? Tell me in the comments. I can't believe I'm saying it, but... The story has grown as the day has went on. Celtic fans had it in their head that we're going to spend thirty million on some decent players to improve the level of the squad. It's coming back to this this thing that Ange Postecoglou was saying: we're coming out the window. Will we come out the window as a stronger squad? We didn't really need a lot of squad players brought in this window, and we've brought in a few players so far. And you can say that there's not many of them going to be. Um, there's been one or two that are going to be actual first team stars, maybe three. I would give uh, Yang, Ohm and um, the defender that we've just brought in. So, bringing in a player that hasn't played so much the last couple of seasons, the only thing that he's got going for him is he's Scottish, he has had a lot of injuries, but he's been out of the team, he's never managed to get going at Newcastle. So tell me your thoughts on Ryan Fraser coming to Celtic. It is, you know, it's one of those ones that you, ca you cannot understand because let's face it Newcastle got him for absolutely nothing they got him on a freedom of contract he, he left Aberdeen um, to go down south for a deal that was worth 400 grand fair enough it was about 10 years ago but 
you know, how he has said about the player, he said it's very difficult for us as a football club because in an ideal world, for their careers, I would want them to go and play football and have a good career at another football club. But there are all sorts of difficulties associated with it. The lengthy contract that they still have at Newcastle and the amount of money that they are earning and finding a club that they are willing to go to also. They're all they're great lads talking about the other players that are trying to get pushed out of Newcastle also. He says, I have no issue with them, but let's see what happens. The fact that this story has got bigger during the day, it's now expected that Celtic are about to make a formal approach. A formal approach. Now, you're going to get them for not a lot of money. Is it the type of player we really need to be bringing in? The possibility of... look When we look at, at the, the win against Aberdeen, Aberdeen were a good team. They were really organised. They, sort of, they, they pushed us. They didn't sit back too much. Celtic had to work hard. Um, people have been saying, we need to get, he's not a replacement for Jota, let's face it. Um, Ryan Fraser, transfer to Celtic. And there, there are now player, there are publications out there saying that it would be good for everyone involved if Ryan Fraser came to Celtic and left Newcastle. One, it would get his international career back up and running. Really, he hasn't played for Scotland in, in a good few years. And let's face it, um, I don't, is he the type of player that we want? Tell me in the comments. He went down, he left Aberdeen in 2012, 2013 season. So you're talking 10 years ago now. Um, at that time, he was lured south by Bournemouth. Bournemouth at the time were a League One club for a fee of 400,000. He spent eight years with them after a brief loan spell at Ipswich Town. And then he played a part in, in their rise up the... English Football League and into the Premier League. He joined Newcastle in 2020 on a free transfer, but never managed to tie down a regular starting berth during his three-year seasons that he's had there. He won his first Scotland Cup in 2017. He's made a total of 26 appearances for Scotland. Now, to me, that says it's a, it's a player that um, hasn't really made it at the highest level, should Celtic be going on for him. <sighs> It's a really difficult one. It is a really difficult one. There's a lot of Celtic fans saying no, not a chance. They shouldn't. But can Brendan Rodgers work his magic with the player? Can Brendan Rodgers turn him into a player that went through a similar time, similar thing as Chris Sutton? Chris Sutton went to Newcastle and he never really sort of hit the heights that everybody thought he would. Um, tell me your thoughts in the comments. Tell me your thoughts in this live this evening where we will talk about this situation that we have at Celtic. We'll talk about the biscuit tin mentality that Celtic now seem to have again, again. We have to have we seem to have had this biscuit tin mentality. We've brought in good money this summer. We should have been spending good money on good players. We haven't got the goalkeeper in that we thought we were going to get. He is now signing for Fenerbahce, which is absolutely devastating for us. So where do we go from here? Celtic have said there will be movement in the transfer goal in the goalkeeping section only if Benji Segrist is, leaves the team. And Benji is the only goalkeeper that is unhappy at the fact that he's now playing third fiddle to Scott Bain. And Scott Bain's only playing second fiddle because he is Scottish and they're going to use that for the European run. So tell me your thoughts in the comments again. It is unbelievable that we're, we're going so low as far as I'm concerned. So low with the biscuit tin mentality once again at Celtic. So much for building from a power of strength. Tell me your thoughts in the comments. Have a great day Celtic fans all around the world.